So, Lekhotla is a very common term, and we we will not claim it to be an IP of Comesa at all. It is not really possible. But the Comesa Lekhotla Learning and Development and Facilitation Methodology, it is it is a Comesa creation where we took this Lekhotla methodology and we integrated it with many other facilitation methodologies, like uh, brainstorming methodology, uh, like uh, time to think by Nancy Klein methodology, where you create an environment for thinking to take place, proper, deeper, active, intentional thinking to take place. And, and that's where she talks about you need to make time available on a daily basis where you think. And in that time, you are not pressurized to make any decision about what you are thinking about. And you are not pressurized to take any action. But you just spend a moment with yourself, really welcoming thoughts into your mind. And when you have decided on which thought you are going to spend time on, you stick with that thought without really jumping from one thought to another. That's an art. In some, some people will talk about, you need to be very fully present with what is going on in your system. Your system being your mind and your body, your feeling and everything. That, that is a very much serious requirement for you to be able to be fully present in facilitating a hot uh, uh, event or conducting any coaching or any any conversation. You have methodologies that informed us like the World Cafe methodology, which is quite very famous methodology, which is used to facilitate big groups, where you take these small big groups, you group them into small groups, and why they call it the World Cafe, the founders of the World Cafe used the cafe methodology, where you meet in a cafe and then you sit at various tables and you have a conversation around a cup of coffee around the table there. And then after that, after a couple of time, you change and you move from one table to another. And then you leave one person at that table and that person gets joined by other people from the other table. And when they join that table, then he tells them or she tells them what was discussed previously with the other group that has moved on. And these ones who arrive, then they tell this person what they are coming with from the other table where they come from. In many cases, you will be talking around the same theme. Like we have a theme today called Youth Empowerment Network. So it will not be all over, but it will be various sub-themes of that. And then you move on. So, so the Lakota methodology is also one of those. And that's what we say when we call it Lakota, Lakota Facilitation Methodology. We mean that we have taken the African traditional discipline of conversation and we integrated into modern way of facilitating conversations. Now, there are a number of principles that you follow in El Khoda. And then I know I'm checking in, but at the same time, I'm sort of like uh, introducing to those who have not experienced El Khoda, the concept and the philosophy. And one of those things in the African traditional culture, you sit in a cycle, as Srabula was saying, and uh, in that cycle, uh, it's not really, a, there's no power play. The chairperson is facilitating the conversation, but is not necessarily the leader of the group. And, and then, of course, whoever is on this floor is given full attention by those who are listening. And once you finish talking, you let go of Indugu, and somebody takes over the Indugu, hold on to Indugu, and then he's on the floor. And they, they need to edify you before they introduce a new topic. You can't walk away from the topic that has not been exhausted and just rush to introduce a new topic. So, so at the end of the day, you end up actually talking about few topics, but very intensely. So I will come back uh, to expand more once uh, the other colleagues have just shared the, the last encounter with Lekhota, either face-to-face -face or online here. And the last exposure where they use Lekhota to facilitate a conversation. And, uh, and that will be almost uh, kicking in our panel with our, our, our speakers. Let me hold it there. 
uh, not 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 share too much at the time, and allow my other colleagues maybe to interject a little bit. And then in terms of introduction, I mean, all of you you have engaged with engagement with me. You know the history of how we became together here. So I, I wouldn't be adding any value by saying much about myself, except that, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes I'm synonymous with Comesa, but uh, I'll regard myself as just the facilitator of this session today. And uh, on the on the bigger scheme of things, obviously being the head of Comesa, and uh, you know that Comesa is a, it's a human capital management and leadership development consultancy. We do a lot of this empowerment work, but the, the biggest business of Comesa that people don't see is really coaching, facilitation, and mentoring. And as I was saying to Rabula earlier on, very few people get to see our other associates, mentors and coaches that we work with at client level throughout the year, month in, week in, days in, days out. So great, I will hold it there. And I'll just ask Rabula, Secha, Michael to share with you whatever experience they've had with Lokhotla. Over to you, Paul. All right, I'll start. This let's press at the beginning. Um, Sralmiji Pajani. My name, it's a clear name. I inherited it in person. So, 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 it's uh, there's a loud noise. I don't know what it is. Okay, maybe. Like an engine of something running in the background. I think my earphones are broken. Let me change them. Okay. Okay, somebody can be continue while you're sorting out your... Rabula, you want to continue? I wanted to be the last one in the queue today because very often when you say next, I jump in the queue. So, but it looks like Schamich is got a problem. So let me. Uh, we can ask there. Michael to move it. Jump in. <laughs> so, how are you sorted? Yeah, is it fine now? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So uh, I was saying my name. I've inherited it from my ancestors, so it's a family name. Mm -hmm. I've been inherited from my grandmother, and professionally, I'm an accountant. I'm, I'm a visual Lokhotla member. I've never experienced the face-to-face -face Lokhotla, but I've done the visual one. And my experience so far with the Khotla, it has been very informative and it has also guided me in terms of the life choices that um, I had to make. Uh, for example, I've attended the mentorship one. So with the mentorship one, I gained a lot of insight. Um, it actually enlightened me in terms of like what should one aim for in a mentorship relationship and now I'm able to guide or even structure my mentorship involvement going forward better compared to previously where you just go in and sit with this person and go through a normal mentoring session and the other one that I learned so much was I'm, I'm, I'm a newly I newly found my reading interest so I know with the previous Lakota that we attended with, um, what, what is Nicholas? When he, he recommended Time to Think, I actually have a book. I'm almost a quarter away from reading it. And yeah, to Sam's comments, uh, when I read it, I, I felt like I was reading a Lakota manual. And yeah, 
I will hand over to my colleagues. Michael, you can go. Okay, thanks, uh, My name is Michael Pelamalava. I am from uh, Limpopo in Rampachele. That's where I grew up, but I was born in Tempisa and spent a couple of years in Tempisa before moving to Limpopo and Pachele. Um, I'm currently stay at Kempton Park and I'm an administrator and also a production manager at Cometa. Yes, I think that's it on my side. And your experience of Lohotla? It, it, it came a long way, more specifically from the face-to-face. -face. Uh, that was my first interaction with it. Uh, just this young boy from Ampachel and goes to, you know, to, to engage in a more uh, environment where there are a lot of uh, more, I could say, specifically experienced and professional people. And there is this young boy who, for the first time, got forced to be a speaker and present what they were discussing on the panelists. So those were such a huge uh, moments on my side. Uh, it's more specifically the engagement that we compel with it during the Lohota and how the discussion goes. So, yeah. Uh, Mike, you are very economical with with knowledge, but it's fine because uh, uh, Salom and uh, Katu are waiting to get clear picture of Lokota. But now, let me just proceed. My name is Rapula Mudibani. Uh, I'm, I'm a small entrepreneur based in a district called Bujanala. One, people, one person was asking me why do you prefer to call yourself Bujanala? It's because I'm sitting between Bretz and Rustenburg, and they form part and parcel of towns within Bujanala district. And I'm committing between the two uh, uh, towns to so make sure that I'm part and parcel of the game. Uh, one of the things which I'm doing in my business, which is uh, retaliate holding groups, is diversification in various aspects, which incorporate mentorship, coaching, and facilitation. Sometimes I diversify in the different structures where I do project management. Le uh, Kota uh, way I started, I think, to be full-time involved at in the beginning of last year, no, the beginning of the year before last. If I'm, if I'm trying to go back well as much as I call. And that has changed my mind because at the time I was just nearly got retrenched and my mind was all over. And I attended one session of mindfulness and that has changed the way I see things different. And since then, I never look back. So when a um, COVID kicks in last year in March, uh, things were called hold up and you started to communicate electronically or visually if we put it visually it stands right now and that's how it start shaping up in terms of the mindset of the person how do you put it forward in terms of thinking ahead i've attended various aspects and various topics of lokota uh, we tried a little bit of some other uh, associate as associate member some businesses but unfortunately one of them which i thought would come out with the University of Fristad that never pitched out. So it was one of those things which we say, uh, Rome was not built in one day. Uh, how I realized that uh, uh, my involvement in Comesa Radio has got a lot of impact is when I received a call from City of Johannesburg. I said, now because of your involvement in radio, can you come and facilitate to us an investor road show? And because I'm clued up with investor road shows, my focus was say what investors want to know in that conversation and that has changed the way they thought of their futuristic investor show. Chances are I might get an invitation again next year. Uh, what are the learnings in Lekhotla is the more you attend different session, the more you start sitting in your uh, used weight blood or thinking, you don't even think about it, it comes out naturally. Areas like checking in, areas like um, the cycle itself, and then how the cycle operate uh, of the quarter. Uh, time to reflect because 
one of the things which I've learned from mindfulness is either in the morning or in the evening before you go to bed, you close your eyes very slowly and you start reflecting on the day's activity and tomorrow's activities. Even when you go to bed, after sleeping in the morning, in the morning when you woke up, please that five minutes or ten minutes of you closing your eyes, rethinking again, it really sustains your energy. That's what I've learned from our monthly sessions of Cometa. And I hope the guys who are listening will also have the similar learnings going forward. Uh, Sam, I think I sort of try to summarize a little bit about what I've learned from Lokota and what I'm learning going forward in terms of Lokota. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Rapula. Uh, and also thanks for sharing with us uh, the experience of actually applying Lokota in a real client situation, because that is really the whole idea. Uh, welcome, Vuzi. Uh, we see you have just joined. So we have our our three speakers now here. So at least we will be able to condense the program into half day, as I indicated. You 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 quite very right, Rapula, when you were saying to Michael, he's he's very economical with his experience of Lokhotla. But I'm going to edify some of the points he mentioned because it's a, it's a living example of how the Hotla enabled him to jump into what he's doing right now at Comesa. Remember when I started, I said that uh, there, are two, there are two outcomes of every Lekhotla that you attend. And they also the reason why we have monthly Lekhotla is that we, we are very fanatical about the Lekhotla methodology as a methodology you will use to facilitate any conversations or to do uh, uh, strategy planning or team development. And that is the whole Hotla methodology itself. Mechanics of it is very important and the discipline and the principles that it, that it uses. And then secondly, as, as how I say, the, 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 the delivery of a particular theme or a particular topic is the second outcome. Uh, like today, our theme is a youth empowerment network, and we are going to be sharing ideas around how we can actually impact on youth development and empowerment, but using the Lokotla way. In other ways, it's the application of the Lokotla methodology to enter into a conversation under a particular theme and experience the impact of Lekhotla. And that could be similar to what you were doing, uh, Rabula, when you were facilitating a conversation and investors roadshow, using the Lekhotla way to maximize the achievement of that. And, and basically that's how Michael actually participating in our Lekhotla for a full year, ended up actually joining us here in the office and now being involved in the putting together of the Lekhotla. I don't have to tell him, what needs to be done because he knows all the logical steps to get to a Lekhotla, which is similar to the logical steps that you follow to put together a radio show. You first identify the topic, you identify a guest, and then you put together a program, and the program follows certain steps. Now, when you, on the day of the Lekhotla, which is what uh, you will have experienced if you were coming to a full face-to-face -face Lekhotla, and we're trying to simulate it here on the online hotel. The first thing is the arrival and the registration. Whereas, that is step one. Whereas it looks very simplistic, but in a Lekhotla methodology, it's a very critical. Because normally the first one hour where we say that you cannot go into a conversation with people that you don't know. You don't know where they come from, who they are. And therefore the first one hour, eight to nine, we always call it time to enjoy coffee and sconces and greet and meet and reconnect. And that is that is that is the, the, the arrival and registration and informal network. So so we try to do that also here on the online show that let's meet an hour before before we start the formal program, have a cup of coffee online and chat a little bit. And those who come early, they, they will catch the fattest worm. In other ways, they will have a bigger chunk time to engage and connect. Because connecting in business is very important. And one has to be very intentional about it. 
uh, and not arrive very late and then you don't know where people are and immediately you you, you weaken your position the next step is uh, okay the, the, that step two is really just emphasizing the fact that that is that first hour is a voluntary networking but it's really a, a, an hour of uh, learning how to network especially networking with people you don't know that is one of the most underestimated skills. It's not, it's not something that you just get to have. You, you, you learn to practice it, you know? Uh, and and we, we, we look at that, we observe that very seriously. If we want you to one day to be part of us facilitating a commercial work, we'll want to know if you are invited to come and facilitate a session, will you be able to hold a conversation during the first one hour of informal arrival, because that is very critical. And that's the point at which you actually win the interest of the people that are coming to your event. Step three is what we are doing now and what you have just done. And I'm gonna ask our call, our three guest speakers also to, to get to do that. Uh, and those who have experienced coaching is really, we call it checking in. Why is checking in important? And it not, should not be confused with arrival and chit-chatting. Here you are intentionally reflecting on your state of mind and the, and the past week or past month, if you haven't been seeing it of a month. And, and share with us what has been happening in your life. We want to know if your energy level is right for what we want to do today, or you need us to help you to boost you up a little bit. If you come from a very bad past week or a past morning, and you are not fully in your element. We don't want you to come into a Lakotla where we are flying at a high energy level and you pull us to the low energy level, unintentionally. And that's why checking in body, mind, spirit, how do you feel, how, what state of mind are you in? When you share the story with us, we are able to empathize with you and we are able actually to sort of like uh, bring you up to a level where everybody is. So checking in is very, very important. Then you come to step four, which is basically the set, we call it the setting. Now, uh, Rabula was talking about the cycle. That is really one of the fundamental pillars of Lekhotla, and that is the sitting arrangement is such that you close the full circle and you don't sit in a, in a way that somebody appears to be the head of the conversation. You do a cycle, you close the cycle, you put the indugu in the middle, which is basically a stick uh, that you use to determine, to tell the people that they are on the floor and everybody else in the cycle is literally asked to physically turn and face the person that is talking. Now you don't see it here on the online Lokota because we, we are only just a screen. But in a in a in a face-to-face lochotla, you'll be sitting in a circle and then the induk is in the middle. Whoever advances to take the induk and have it in a hand, immediately receive full attention by all of us. We physically turn and face that person and connect with that person. And we are saying that if you want to see the power of this or or how how looking away from somebody that is talking can disempower you. Look in a organization, in a conference where these principles are not advanced. You will be talking and somebody will, will be phoning somebody. Somebody could be working on a laptop or could be chit-chatting with another one. You as a speaker, you lose your influence because, or your confidence because you don't know why people are not interested in you. In other words, we're saying that the speaker is a, is a good speaker depending on the, the, the participants in the in a, in a, in a event. So we are intentionally wanting to affirm you as a speaker on the floor by giving you our full six, six, six senses attention. And hence the sitting arrangement is what it is. So when you are facilitating a conversation, that is one of the principles uh, that you need to enforce, that we want to be fully attentive to whoever is on the floor 
And how we do that, we sit in a way that we are able to have a full view of you. And when you start talking, we all turn and face you and keep quiet and just give you the space to a point that even silence is accepted as a communication because during that silence, all of us, we do the processing of what it is we have just had or what it is that we are feeling in the environment and we are sensing. So that's the setting step four. And step five is really where we then open the floor. We call it the main lechotla, because normally the main lechotla will be the, 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 the point in time wherein the speakers come in and deliver a, a topic, a presentation. Now, a presentation to a particular theme. Like we are going to have today a theme, Youth Empowerment Network, and we are going to hear a presentation in the form of the colleagues sharing with us what, what they've put together in their book or in the t topic that they want to address. So we always have, now that's where now we bring in the second learning, the second outcome of the Lekhotla, which is we now have the Lekhotla approach, methodology, and we're applying it. But now we have a guest speaker who brings the knowledge on a particular topic and we are going to use the Lekhotla to learn that topic much better. This is an applied approach to the learning. So the presentation will take place, and then we will normally, after the guest speaker has spoken, before we go and form, form the mini Lekhotla, we will engage a little bit in a conversation using the Lekhotla methodology with the guest speaker to get some clarification if there are any or to ask a few questions because we don't want to go into mini Lekhotla when we have not fully understood what the speaker was actually saying. And what, what, are the, what were the main messages that came out of that presentation? And of course, if, they, if we are fortunate enough and the speaker didn't speak and go away, the speaker is invited to rotate from mini Lekhotla to mini Lekhotla so that the members of the mini Lekhotla can ask for further clarification if they get lost in the process. After the, well, when they get into the mini Lekhotla, it's quite interesting. It's also very structured in those mini Lekhotla. Mini Lekhotla is nothing else but breakaways. So we'll, if we are 20, we'll form a breakaways rooms. We'll go into four breakaway rooms of five people each. So you can put whatever number. But what is critical about the, the mini Lekhotla formation is that in, in the main mini Lekhotla, that's where Sarah presentation, a thorough inter, a, a introduction of self takes place. And we, we, we guide the mini Lekhota by asking the mini Lekhota people to identify somebody who is going to be a chairperson. But that is not a nomination. They need to come and share with us why did they decide that Rabula or Seha or whoever was going to be a chairperson of that mini Lekhota. Because we want them to people to be creative in terms of why they give each other roles. We look at the, then they will appoint a scribe who is also a spokesperson, as somebody that is going to be doing the work of the listening. And then once every one of the people in the mini Lekhotla have made their input, introduced themselves, and they've really shared what the messages they got from the presentation, this scribe write down all those and then at the end of the mini Lekhotla, then they will, she, she will get confirmation from the members if what she's going to give back to the main Lekhotla is what they believe was discussed in the mini Lekhotla. And that's quite very fascinating because it's at that point where people tend to defy and disagree and change and help the scribe to really fully represent them. And that is, that is the, the idea behind the scribe and the behind the, the scribe and spokesperson being somebody who's very good in listening, somebody who's very good in taking down the notes, and somebody that will be very good in representing the mini Lekhotla at the main Lekhotla, giving feedback to what was discussed at the mini Lekhotla. They will also be encouraged to give an identity to their group based on the diversity among themselves and give us why they decide to call themselves whatever they call themselves and what informed that and what naming methodology they used. 
Uh, sometimes people use the current trends and they just choose a name and they say this is the name because one, two, three is happening currently and we agree with that. The introductions are also quite very structured. You don't just say I'm Sam Zima. We, we said it is in the mini Lihotla that you get to know people much deeper because knowing people means more than just knowing their names. Uh, so you'll, you'll explain, as Zeha was explaining, who she is, why is she called Zeha, and where did she get, get the name from? And that is an African way of introductions. If you say you are Sam, and they will say, listen, talk to us. Sam doesn't tell us much about you. So that way, as we go to identity and who you come from and who you stand for, what is your clan, who is your clan and where they are. Obviously, in a modern workshops, we... We, we always pressurize under time, but in the learning during our monthly Lokota, we push for this. But in the setup that Zapula was sharing with us, obviously you will go that deep because time is of essence. But the concept is still there, that people get to know who you are, where you work, what position you do, and all of that. So yeah, that also can be told and, uh, in details. And then when once the mini lochotla is in session, we we expect them to be spending time on what they've learned from the presentation in the mini lochotla and what does it mean for them, and also what is it that they are going to be taking from here to the mini lochotla, because it's at the mini lochotla where we collectively decide what we think we need to be going to do when we go back home, and which is done in the concept of the checking out. And sometimes there could even be projects coming out of that main lehota. Because our, our themes repeat themselves every year. We've got about 52 lehota themes, and they are all structured, and, and they happen every year. So we will sometimes want to do take projects that in the following year, we could almost report back and say, as a result of that Lohotla, this is what I ended up doing. And, and it's always good to, to get feedback of such progress. We will then reconvene the, at the main Lohotla after mini Lohotla. Now, if there were four main, mini Lohotlas, that means you're going to receive four feedback presentation by representatives of those mini Lohotlas. The idea here is to present back in such a way that the other members of other mini Lihotlans who were not part of your mini Lihotlan, they will learn the same way as you are learning in your mini Lihotlan, as if they were there. And that's why you ascribe and a representative will give a spokesperson. Cannot just talk things that were not really discussed and were not agreed. So in other ways, the main Lohotla, second main Lohotla where we feed back is what in the learning you call it aggregation. And, uh, and then that is at the main, second main Lohotla where we give feedback that if you've missed the themes and the messages from the speaker, then you get to really to catch up through the feedback from many Lohotlas. There's no way then one will leave Lohotla and go home having not really learn at the same level. You might have missed the presentation, but the mini main mini lehotla help you to actually to, to, to get to hear what was actually the message. And the main lehotla feedback session is almost like cementing the learning. So that's why the, the, the development of people get very highly accelerated if people attend lehotlas regularly because you basically learn to learn the adult way. And it's quite very intense and quite very effective. And yet it's only maybe six hours in a day. And then, of course, if you've done six hours every month, that six hours times 12 is quite a lot. And that's why you have people like Warabula. He didn't even have to talk to me to say, I'm going to address the city of Johannesburg. Can you remind me something about the hotel? Because he has done it so many times. And on top of that, we give you the manual. So you literally... Uh, the membership with Comesa gives you the tool that not to say I'm experienced in Lohota, but you can even take a manual with and use manual to empower other people. 
because it's not the manual that you are selling, it's the product that you are facilitating. That's why we are so open and, and generous with the methodology because we believe that if we all practice it and we perfect it, we're all going to be effective and we're all going to grow. So that is really the... the, the so I love the, the last part of the main Lakota where we, once we have now all had all the presentations and we open the floor for, for sort of like clarifications and uh, even some people make some pronouncements as to what, what they are going to do. And then we ask you to check out. Now, those who have been coached by me or have been in a coaching sessions with me, it's the same checkout that we will do in a coaching session. But, but it doesn't mean that this is the only way one you can use. But we feel that if you don't know how to check out after the session, we initially stick to these five uh, 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 themes of checking out. The first one is called confirmation. Here we are saying that in, just think as we were coming into the Lohotla, certain things and certain uh, uh, insights that you have had that God confirmed by Lohotla, what were those? So we make you think a little bit then and now and share with us what was confirmed for you by the session. And it's at this point sometimes when people really then get to give you feedback that, because sometimes when you are facilitating, you never, you're never not quite sure that it is actually happening. And it's at this time people get to tell you, man, it was great. I have managed to confirm certain things. The second one is what we call the, 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 the light bulb moments. The aha moments. We want people to share with us that at what point did they really experience that? And when they, when they do that, you get almost like uh, snippets of the impacts done at various levels by different things for different people. And then we will then ask you, the third one is to give share with us the new knowledge that you have acquired, the new insights uh, that were brought by the speaker, by the mini Lohotla, and by the main Lohotla. And by the way, when time allowing, all of us, we do that. If we are too many, we then ask people to check on behalf of their meaning of others. The take home is that that encourages you to say, if you were to go home, what is it that you will take with from here to share with other people at home? And lastly is the new practices that you will want to start uh, uh, implementing as a result of you attending a particular Lohotla. Either from the Lekhota methodology itself or from the new topic that the guest speakers brought in. And then we will then check out, I mean, we'll end up with sometimes a, a voluntary networking, cup of coffee, and then we go. And we hope people in between this Lekhota and the next Lekhota, they will start seeing differences in their day-to-day -day interactions with their stakeholders and friends and anybody else in their lives. I hope I sum it up, but it will make more sense if we share with you the, the manual. Before we, we're going to go into our, our panel of our guests, uh, is there anything, Rabula, uh, Seha, and Michael, that you think I've touched and you want to just edify or confirm or comment on? Nothing from my side, sir. You summarize it very well, so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable there. Yes, I agree with you. He summarized everything very well. I'm on mute. Mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I said uh, let's uh, let's hear from our our guests if there's anything that they picked up as I was introducing our uh, um, our concept of Lekhota. They've been hearing a lot about Lekhota. I hope. We, it's getting closer and closer to being understood. 
Have we inspired you? Hatu Vuzi Salom. Uh, Sam, I, you said something that intrigued me when you spoke about the, the fact that when you're having a Lukhutla face-to-face, you come to a point where you have a table sitting that you will now and then rotate. Um, when you go to the other table, you will tell them what was being said on the other table, what was discussed on the other table. I got really intrigued there. I think um, I'm somebody who likes conversations and dialogues. I, I think I'm looking forward for that. I, I would really like to experience that. I've never experienced anything like that before. So you just got me excited there. I would really like to mm. experience that yes. um, in the future. That, 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 was, that, is, that was when I spoke about the World Cafe methodology which yes. informed our Lakota methodology. Yeah, if you want to experience World Cafe, it's, it's the mini Lakota is, is similar to those tables, except that we don't make people move from one table to another because it takes quite a long time. That's when you do two, three days, big groups facilitation, but we incorporate that in our mini Lakota. It's almost like when you come to the main Lakota, it's like now you are sharing with other mini Lakota what you are discussions in your mini, in your mini Lakota. It, 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 it is. It is. It has informed our formation. Absolutely, you will. It's powerful. You know, it's, it's learning at an accelerated pace without losing impact. Good morning, colleagues. Uh... This is Mvusi. And this is Mvusi speaking. I I came late and I think I have missed a a lot of excitement at the beginning that would have introduced me to the Lakota way. Uh, however, I had uh, the opportunity of experiencing it as an individual through coaching uh, by Nda Dizema. What I liked uh, uh, most of all, what I had just uh, at the at the end, which I've experienced in the last uh, two months, I can tell you, with uh, really connecting uh, weekly uh, with uh, this platform, as is you know like the the gaining of the confidence, getting to know people not only by name. Uh, so for me, I think this is really uh, reminding me of who we are, like Hotla Dembizo, where you don't only introduce yourself as that this is Mbosi, which sometimes is very challenging for people that are very private. But I guess uh, when we get to engage in the Lekotla way, we get to connect with each with each other at a deeper mm-hmm. level. And and for me, I think uh, it really emphasizes the community aspect of this of this platform and how we can be able to grow together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mbuzi, by also mentioning that it is it is really it's an African phenomenon. You find it in any African groupings, not only in South Africa, across the continent. Uh, in, in, and earlier on, when we started, I said that the Lhotla is a is a is a is a is a, um, is a common thing. But what we have done, we've taken it, and I think it's something we can be proud of. And, and we were very intentional when we introduced it and say it's nothing to do with intellectual property. If you come to our Lakota, we will we will give you the manual because we want it to be really popularized as one African methodology that can really, really stand up against other methodologies like World Cafe, brainstorming, big group facilitations. And be used, and, and, and it's in, in it's, and it's in us, and so so yeah. Thank you for 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 
for mentioning that it is imbizo, you know, whatever you call it, it's a is is a is a is a meeting of people where the culture is at the center. You know, you know, the Africans are, I mean, if you go to the rural villages and you go and meet these people having meetings, it's incredible the discipline that is there and nobody being forced. But what we have now done is we want you, if you are if you are reserved somebody, to be helped to come out of that reserved mode to become really, really confident to, to, to actually express yourselves. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. Uh, Salome? Hi, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you. Thank you so much. This I find very, very interesting in, um, in a sense that uh, it's bringing back our methodologies because as uh, Vusi and, and Tatetima have just said, the African aspect behind that, I find it very interesting because with the changing of times, we, we, we kind of losing those great knowledge out there that has been there for ages. And then for me, I like the fact that um, this is um, kind of part of this. And when you have shared the, the concept and everything around it, I was like, wow, this is, is great. It's fantastic. And why I'm saying this is because the culture part of it and the African sense of it, which for me is great. I like the fact that it brings in discipline, but most importantly, respect. Because we live in the world whereby people are so attached to their uh, phones and all those kind of things. But the idea that when that is done, you are inconsiderate of the other person, the person speaking. And most importantly, you are holistically expected to be there, mentally, spiritually and physically. So for me, I think that's, that's great. And I'm definitely, the first question for me is to how one will kind of get more exposure and most importantly, understand such a great methodology to, to learn even because if one is fully attentive to what is happening, you will learn in the process from others. But and most importantly, build those relationships outside just saying, I liked it um, when... Um, Sekha shared her, her, her name and the, 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 the history behind that. So sometimes we kind of lose a uh, sense of that. And as time goes on, we go with the current ways of doing things and we lose touch with our roots and other things. So well done. And I'm definitely looking forward to learn from that. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, I will be sending you the, the manual because it will be nice that... Uh, as we as we are going to listen to you uh, talking to us, the Lakota way, it will be good to also be looking at the at the manual. Um, I'm just uh, looking at the at it here, the templates. I'll, I'll find it and then I'll forward it to you. Great. So now. Um, I'm going to ask you before we start with uh, our panel of uh, speakers. I'm going to have to send you a new link because what I'm doing, I'm recording this. So we've been recording this introduction. Uh, we're going to produce a podcast of it so that you can have it. But we also, when our speakers are going to be talking, we are also going to be recording and producing a podcast of it because the whole idea is also that what you are going to be sharing here is going to be made viral through our stakeholder network. So, and probably what I will do, uh, we will start with each speaker and then we do that component of one hour of that speaker. And then we will then jump off, give you another link to another speaker, to another link to another speaker, and then do the another last link where we then do the, the, the the conversations so that we can have snip various packages. Once they podcast more than an hour, it 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 it, it will lose its impact. Is that is that acceptable? That is no fine. Thank you. Good stuff. Because we also want you to be edified. Uh, you could say, listen. This was my session, and this is what we actually we put together and listened to it. That way, we touch many people. So, if you don't mind, just 
just leave the studio now and then just be on the lookout for the next uh, the next link. And uh, we're going to start with Salom when we come back. So uh, that that will be the next link. Uh, it will be coming just now. 